Hello and welcome to the Jungle Garden in Denmark. It is time for the yearly garden tour here in the middle of August. And uh, as you will see, most of the plants are actually looking quite good, despite the really, really bad start with all that rain in April. Some of them, other, some of the other plants have been damaged a lot. Some we have lost and some we don't know yet whether they are going to survive or not. So if we start at the end, at the entrance of the garden, we've got the uh, fern corner with all the bamboos and they have really liked all the water we've had. They've grown very tall, most of them. We've got different kinds and that really tall one is Phyllostachus uh, and then I can't remember the rest, but it's it's the one with the, a vertical green stripe on the stems. I'll, I'll write the, the name, because at the moment I can't remember. And then of course we've got the tree fern, which is also looking really good. Um, but it it gets it gets water every day, and it's already looking a bit dry on the trunk, even though it was watered yesterday. Then let's continue. In this part of the garden, the temperature is very different from the rest. It is uh, it's a bit cooler down here with all the shade and it's a little bit more humid too. Uh, and, and that's why these plants are looking so good, I guess. The plants here are a mix of hostas and different shade tolerant plants. Akuba, Japonica in the background and there's a Fetchia. And um, then we've got the Trachycarpus. Palms. This one is has been a bit damaged during the winter, as you can see, but it's still shooting from the center. Just looks a bit mm, stunted, I think, is the word. But the neighbor is doing really good and has become really tall compared to what it was. So that's good. And then we've got our gondola in the front, which is doing absolutely nothing. I think it's about 50 centimeters tall, really impressive. Um, but our water watering system can't really reach this far down. So even though we hand water it, we, pro we probably don't give it enough. We'll have to do something about that. Then we have a ginger in the foreground, Hedicium Assam orange, and in the background the Formiums variegatas and, uh, uh, and the eucalyptus trees. It is beginning to grow into a jungle, which is really nice. After we found out how to winter protect our Formiums, they have grown huge. There were supposed to be plants here in the foreground in front of the eucalyptus, but uh, you can hardly see the eucalyptus. Hopefully that'll change when the eucalyptus get bigger. We have chosen eucalyptus that grows really fast. The one in front here is the eucalyptus neglecta and it's supposed to uh, be able to grow one to two meters or one to one and a half meters in a in a season. And uh, then there's the one in the back, you might be able to see it, which has actually grown fairly tall. It's 
almost as tall as the hedge behind it. And that's uh, Eucalyptus ernigera. And uh, I wanted to have two, one in each side, but it was uh, sold out, so we had to settle for, for another one. And behind the formium we have a ginger, Hedicium helen dillon, and behind that Musa Bashu, one of the uh, hardy banana plants. And a bit further down the garden we've got the bamboo with the yellow stems, bright yellow stems, uh, Phyllostachus oreo sulcara oreo colis and next to it an alocasia borneo giant which isn't hard enough to stay out here so we have to dig that up we've got fetchia next to it as well and uh, behind it a banana a musa bashu and then we've got the the big polonia tumentosa in the background with the huge leaves and here we have a cucumus burgundy stem which is in flower at the moment and behind it Melianthus major I have to dig that up and take it in it's not hard enough I've tried several times and they always die and uh, then we've got more musa bestu in the background and uh, I think you call it the golden bean tree Catalpa big Pycnoides and the Trachycarpus fortunii which is not looking too good because it actually spear pulled this uh, spring you can see it, it doesn't look too good in the center but um, it's not dead yet, so hopefully it'll make it. So if we walk down the path, uh, we get down to the area that we call, area that we call the mountain. And here to the right, we've got a Cartlea spicata in uh, flower. And this is the mountain area. We've got a Chimerops humilis and the Dazzlerian. I don't know if it's doing okay. It's, it's got all these brown bits in the middle. I'm afraid that it was damaged by all that rain here in April. And then we've got uh, yucca, the yuccas, Gloriosa. And they are, as always, doing really good. And uh, we've got a um, Jubea chilensis, which is doing very well in this area. And after the mountain, we've got the grass area, which is uh, looking okay, I think. The low pot, which has put out a lot of new shoots, um, and that's nice to see because it has looked a bit mm, poorly actually. So, hopefully, it is going the right way for it now. And in the background, we've got our, one of our big Polonia tomatosis with the huge leaves if I zoom in you I think you can see it uh, and the leaves get this big because we coppice the tree every spring otherwise they wouldn't get this big we've got a tree that we don't coppice so you can see the difference in a, in a minute the fig tree has recovered as you can see it's looking really good but unfortunately it probably will only last till next winter it, it really s struggles during the winters 
and here is the view back where we came from. It is um, beginning to look okay, I think. This is where we used to have a big uh, bamboo that sort of took over the whole area that you could hardly get up the path and uh, we now have replaced it with a, a, a magnolia grandiflora and uh, then some smaller plants like that Mahonia soft caress if we could zoom in we could see it and then some other smaller plants colocasias the canna the cannas are not doing so well this year either because of the cold weather. And here we have another polonia with huge leaves because it's been covered in the branch. It's impressive how much it can grow in just one season because it's been coppiced. Um, and then we've got some other plants to give that jungle look like the Nandina and Tetrapanax in the background some hostas that are being devastated by the slugs this year and ferns you can do a lot with ordinary plants and here on the other side of the path A uh, Rodgersia and uh, some more hostas eaten by slugs. And then we've got the bananas, Musa Bashu, and this year we've got a Musa Sicamensis as well. That is the one with the stripy stripes on the leaves. It's looking really good. I don't know if it can stay out here during the winter, we'll just have to think a little about that. And then we've got the palm trees, Trachycarpus. Despite the rough start, it is looking fairly good, I think. But this part of the garden is also beginning to look good. Here's the ordinary Fetchia japonica and the Ecomus bicolor. And then we've got another uh, Sycamensis hardy banana and uh, next to it the Albicia which is uh, gaining some height now hopefully it'll keep the height during the winter it is a little difficult to um, winter protect because it is getting so tall now. The New Zealand bed is, is uh, beginning to look like exactly what I want. Lush and green and um, we've got the Formium tenax, the ordinary green one here to the left. Um, and now that we found out how to protect our Formiums, they're, they're doing a lot during the winter, of course, uh, they're doing a lot better. We've got the tree fern and we've got a couple of coral lines. Um, the one here to the left is, um, is doing really, really well. The one to the right is actually a replacement because the original one died during the winter. And then we had this one growing somewhere else in the garden where it was a bit compromised by a, a big bamboo um, but it looks like it's been damaged by that bamboo because it's not looking too good on the at the middle of the trunk where it's um, sort of black as you can see so uh, we don't know if that will survive and then we've got a, a red formium it's also doing good since uh, the new winter protection has been put in place. So all in all, 
think the New Zealand bed is, is really beginning to look as we want it to look. The Australian bed looks a bit bald. It um, suffered a lot this winter, so a lot of the plants have been replaced with new ones and they're not so big yet. This is the new eucalyptus tree uh, and it doesn't look like much yet. And then we, in the background we've got a bottle brush And we've got another one with a more weeping way of growing here in the corner. And uh, we've got a banksia. And uh, they're all quite small yet, so it doesn't look like much. But hopefully that'll change. And a bit further down the path, we've got the big Canna musifolia with the, the big leaves. One of them is in flower at the moment. Uh, I didn't I didn't think they would get to that this year because they have suffered as well during this winter, and they only got a very few compared to last year where. I I had a lot of them. This is Centodesia Himalaya, also called White Giant. That should be um, really tall. It was planted last year, so it's still new. I think this Miscanthus strictus with its stripy leaves gives it a quite uh, an exotic look when you look at look at this view and this is the polonia that is not being coppiced it was planted this year, so it's still new. Uh, and as you can see, because it's not coppiced, the leaves are not that big. They're still big, but they're not as big as the others. But we've got a bench here, so we don't want to cut it down every spring. And uh, this is where the, the big tree fern is. The fronts look a little teddy and boring. First of all, it's it gets a, a bit more sun than it's supposed to and all these fronts were made indoors so hopefully it'll look a bit fresher next year. Um, the, the smaller tree fern next to it has put up a lot of new fronts as you can see and it looks a lot better. So uh, hopefully it'll be the same with the big one. And it's nice to have a bit of a, of color in all the green. And here is uh, Cosmia Emily Dickens, I think it's called. The yucca bed was really damaged by all the rain. The small yucca rostrata is doing very well as you can see there's no problems with that one but the big one is um, just not looking good uh, we've taken away all the dead stuff but as you can see the keeps coming yellow leaves and uh, even though it's got a lot of green ones here in the middle nothing more happens 
and it's very very dark on the trunk at the top so I'm really afraid that it might have rotted up what a shame we've had that for many years but as you can see Yucca Gloriosa Variegata is doing absolutely fine no problems with that but the ordinary Yucca Gloriosa the green one has really been damaged with all that rain it's got three rosettes I suppose you can call it uh, because it's been flowering and every time it, it, uh, it splits up and uh, two out of those three are dead there's, there's absolutely no life in the top the one closest to me is um, showing signs of life there's actually some small shoots coming up in the middle so we have hopes for that but the other two are dead uh, and they have made these numerous new shoots so I suppose the plant itself knows that it's dead in the top and it needs to produce a new one so we have to find out how many to keep or which ones to keep because um, it's not go going to keep all of them there on top of each other. I really like this view with the papyrus and the red grass in the foreground and then you've got hostas in the background and the variegated acuba and then the rhododendrons that gives that sort of green uh, wall at the back I think it gives you such a calm feeling. But this was all for now. Thank you for watching.